you may have seen me talk about how much AI is going to change the world and how I'm genuinely excited about the possibilities, uh, even though there are concerns. And I want to talk about um, my biggest concern in this video and what we can do about it. So um, there are, you may have heard of the concerns that are typically shared about AI, which is, <laughs> um, well, it will, you know, take over a lot of jobs. It already has begun to do so. Um, that's that's going to impact a lot of us, uh, whether our own work specifically or the the work of the people that we love, and therefore that impacts you know their mental health and that impacts us as well. Obviously, we we care about them. So, number one, job loss. Number two, uh, political um, or shall we say, uh, the persuasive power of AI will be so massive that we you know we haven't seen anything yet i mean you know we we thought that maybe social media had an impact about on on the 2016 elections etc we haven't seen anything yet with regards to what ai can do to personalize based on what it knows about us um and based on all of its tests that it can do much faster than what social media has been able to do to be able to um, persuade us of things that that whatever the advertisers uh, want. So that's not only scary in terms of politics, but also in terms of our consumerism. That's number two. Number three, um, this is more far-fetched, maybe not, but the potential Terminator uh, world where AI you know, gets out of control and no longer is aligned with the, uh, the values of humanity and therefore exterminates us in some way. All right, well, first of all, I don't think that Terminator world uh, is something that you or I could do something about, honestly, unless you happen to work at OpenAI or, or Midjourney or one of the other companies. Hello, welcome to my, my little video. Um, but nobody watching this works at an AI company or is a politician. Uh, if so, I'm deeply honored, but they're probably not watching this. So those of us who are here are mostly solopreneurs, um, people who are trying to build an online business or trying to create a true livelihood. And we can't influence. I mean, sure, we can vote. That's fine. You, you vote every now and then and for, for various policies. But on a day-to-day -day level, we can't influence whether or not we get to um, AI take off, misaligned, uh, you know, destroy the world type of artificial intelligence. My biggest concern with AI is this. It will get so good and so entertaining that imagine a world where you can just type a few words about the kind of movie you want to watch and it'll instantly create it for you. I mean, within minutes. Um, oh, I want to see the um, the next Matrix movie, <laughs> you know, you know um, and I want to see it with this this actor and that actor, and then it'll create it for you on the fly. It's getting that good, and it's gonna. It's right now. It's they've already. I've they've, I've already seen demos of the early ones. I'm like, it's not there, obviously, but it's it's very early. Within six months, and or sixteen months. It's going to be so much better. Um, AI video games are going to be so mesmerizing. I mean, we if you've played video games, you know that, you know, especially if you play role-playing games where you're like an adventurer and you're trying to, you know, slay the dragon or, or whatever, um, or just any other role-playing game, the characters, they always, they always have the programmed dialogue. You can't really talk more than what they're programmed to, to say, right? Well, now with ChatGPT, they're integrating that kind of ChatGPT technology into video games where you go up to any character, any non-playable character, NPC, and you can have a full-on meaningful conversation with them about anything because now they're just able to generate real-time dialogue without the constraints of a human programmer. Um, AI social media is going to be way more mesmerizing. You thought that social media is addicting now? It is, obviously. 
Um, and thank you for watching this. You know, <laughs> you're addicted to watching my videos. Now. Uh, this is maybe a little bit of a, of a good addiction, perhaps, as long as you're taking action, right, from what I say. But social media has already gotten all of us scrolling for, for more time than we probably want. Well, with AI, the development of artificially generated social media that's directly connected to your preferences because it studies what you click on it studies what you what when you scroll and you pause your scroll like even pause for three seconds it times that and go okay you you pause for three seconds here versus the other thing you didn't pause you kept going oh this one you paused for 30 seconds it learns all of that and go okay and then then understand what you want and it'll generate real time you don't you don't even have to wait anymore for your friends to put up some cool you know cat video, or you don't have to wait for some thought leader or some brand to post something interesting. AI will generate it for you instantly based on what your preferences are. So social media will become so much more tempting than even today. So much more distracting because whenever you feel even slightly anxious, even slightly resistant or procrastinating, it's so easy to go, oh, let me let me instantly get a get a quick hit on what I what it knows I will love and what it knows will draw me in. That's coming. It really is. And so, okay, and then finally, this is this is probably the scariest. Uh, the, this is where I'm this is where I'm most scared for all of us. AI companions. Artificially intelligent chatbots that are not just text-based anymore. ChatGPT, you think, well, ChatGPT is the most successful software in history. It grew the faster than uh, YouTube, faster than Facebook, faster than Instagram, faster than TikTok, way faster. So many people love it because it instantly generates conversation um, that you can have meaningful life discussions about, right? That's already incredibly mesmerizing. Now, take, take to the next level. Not only is it going to, to know how to con converse with you intelligently, but it'll be generating video in real time as a person to talk with you. So, so within 12 months, many people will have an AI companion on their phone that can, be, can look like whatever they want it to look like, whatever celebrity they want, whatever you know, race, gender, um, personality type, how they dress, how they talk, it, it can be just tailored to what the user wants and can talk to them about all their problems, all their, um, you know, goals. And, you know, so, <clears throat> so with the advent of AI social media, AI media and entertainment and AI companions, the new world, and when I say new, I mean next year, basically, it's coming that fast. It's going to be so incredibly distracting to the work that you and I do that actually adds value to our careers. So let me say this again. <clears throat> Everyone will be distracted even more so than now. Even more so than now, it will be easier to numb our anxiety, our loneliness, our sense of self-doubt or fears or anger or sadness or anything it'll be so easy to numb it with oh let's let me go to ai let me go to entertainment or let me go to my companion or whatever and so what happens is that basically no one's going to be able to get any work done already it's like this right even without ai we're already like scrolling on social media or playing video games or whatever it's no one's going to be able to get any work done. So that's my biggest concern. I'm calling this out early. Right now, you don't believe me because you don't see it yet, but I'm seeing it already. I see what's coming. And please visit this video in a year and you'll go, wow, George, I should have been preparing like you've been saying. So how do we prepare for, for the coming world? Well, you can look at how you've already been interacting with social media and with online entertainment and with you know the availability of messaging and responding to emails and comments and all that you can see how you're already interacting with it and how do you keep healthy boundaries with all of that or not because where you 
aren't keeping healthy boundaries with technology, it's going to get even harder. So this is my call to action for all of us to pay attention even more to our self-regulation, to our emotional well-being, to our ability to calmly focus on our work, especially when the work is difficult, when, they're, when you're having um, fears about reaching out to potential clients for market research, for whatever, when you have uh, anxiety before you post on social, you know, before you post content, when you are confused about what direction to take next in your business, when you are unsure how to plan your time, <clears throat> all of those current resistances and uh, kind of like um, inertia, right? All that current inertia that you're facing right now, it's only going to get even harder because of the temptations that are coming. So you have to lean in even more to whatever methods work for you to keep good boundaries with technology to go and to 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 be self-aware about your anxieties your self-doubt your fears your resistances your procrastination your uh lack of belief you know your lack of self-esteem you have to be even more you have to really lean in right now while you still have the time to before the um, the onslaught of ai lean in to whatever techniques, and I welcome you, by the way, please comment below what techniques help you to self-regulate so that you can avoid temptations and distractions and focus on work, especially when it's hard, especially when you don't want to do it, especially when it so-called grates on your soul or it feels unnatural for you to work, right? If it's like, I'm not inspired today. I'm not, you know, feeling creative today. I'll just put this off another. I'm not feeling, I'm not, I'm not in my passionate burst of creativity right now. You're going to have even more strong and reasonable excuses next year or in the next 12 months as the temptations become even greater. So for me, you probably know this by now. My, my methods is joyful productivity. It's a whole suite of skills. I, I, I live it. I work through it every day. I work with it every day. I teach it. I have a whole course about joyful productivity that you might want to look into. I have a book about it. I have blog posts about it. I have many videos about it. This is so I am even more urgent for myself and for my clients to be practicing the skills of joyful productivity, to be strengthening those muscles now in preparation. Well, now is useful already because of social media and the things that already distract us, but <clears throat> even more for the, coming, uh, for the coming years. So what that means is that you need to remind yourself every day right now, starting now, starting today, um, have some kind of reminder system for yourself to be practicing joyful productivity or whatever you want to call your suite of skills that self-regulates that um, brings you reliably back to calm, joyful focus, especially on the hard stuff. Because remember, what adds value and makes you money is for you to do the hard stuff. If you could make money doing the easy stuff, you would have already made as much money as you want. Let me say that again. You're not making as much money as you want to is because you haven't done as much of the hard stuff that you don't want to. Yes, it's having to work through your resistance to showing up online, showing up on video, for example, your resistance to reaching out to potential clients, your resistance to promoting an offer that nobody might buy. So therefore, the self-doubt, the fear, the what if, the fear of rejection, all that. that's the hard work that most people are not willing to do and keep just going back to social media for or go video games or talk to their friends or whatever, which is all good, except when it distracts them from, well, I plan to be, you know, making my blog post at from 2 to 3 p.m., but I don't feel like doing it. I have self-doubts. I have blocks about creativity. I, 
all this stuff. So you have to lean into this every single day because otherwise you'll forget. And so what is your daily reminder? Whenever, you know, whichever days you take off from work, that's fine. But during your working days, at the beginning of your working days, do you have a reminder? And not just at the beginning, but in the middle, right? Probably two or three or four times during your working day. Do you have a reminder to practice again your joyful productivity skills? So you say, okay, that's right. I'm naturally going to resist. I'm naturally going to procrastinate. I naturally have self-doubt. This stuff naturally feels unnatural to me to work on these things. I feel like I should be able to make money just being who I am. Why is that not the case? I, should, I, I feel like I should be able to make money just working with my clients. Why do I have to do marketing? Why do I have to set up technology and administration? That's, and of course, AI will make some of these things easier. That's the, that's the good news about AI. That, that, that really will make a bunch of this administration and marketing easier. But of course, it makes it easier for everyone too. Let's think about this, right? Whatever AI makes easier for you, it makes easier for all of your competitors. So you're back to the same issue. Everyone will have the same level. The, 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 the playing ground will be up level for everybody, which means that to stand out and add value and be able to make money, because who's going to want to pay unless you do the hard work, right? George, you don't have to get, you don't have to do hard work to get paid. That's, that's baloney. Is that right? You, you can do easy work and get paid? Fine. T show, me, show me how much money you're making doing easy work. Probably not as much as you'd like. It's the people who are willing to do the hard work that gets paid more. That gets so, so if you want to reach your income potential, you're going to have to reach your personal potential. And to reach your personal potential means for you to do hard work. And when I say hard work, I don't mean I don't mean that you have to suffer, but I do mean that you have to figure out how to work through your resistance, your lack of creativity, your lack of inspiration, your lethargy, your tiredness, your self-doubt, your anxieties, all of that that my, I face as well. That's why I'm able to talk about this stuff. You have to, just like me, all of us, each of us, has to keep practicing every day, several times a day, to say, that's right, I'm coming back. As a human being, I am learning how to become a better human being, a more creative, powerful, authentic, authentically expressive, and smarter human being. And yes, I will use all the tools that are available to me, but so is everybody else using those tools too. And so to, for me to stand out so that people actually want to pay me rather than saying, well, you do the same as everybody else. Everyone, it's all free. The, the free, free content is going to be even, right? That's, that's like I said, in, my, in, in, in the coming age, in the coming year or two, it's going to be even harder to compete with free content because so much of it's going to be AI generated. It's going to be like, again, tailored to the specific individuals. AI is going to be able to, companies are going to be use AI to generate content that tailors ex exactly to you and to you and to you and to you and to you. And so as human beings generating content, we have going to have way more competition. So we have to up-level ourselves even more. So although society will be even, will be more entertaining than ever before, it also means that it's going to be even harder to make money than ever before because the, the playing field has been up-leveled. And I'm not saying it's going to be harder to make money because there's going to be even more opportunities, but you have to practice your joyful productivity in order to do things that are above and beyond what everyone else is doing, everyone else in your industry is doing. You have to create better products, better services than what everyone else has, better content than what everyone else is going to be able to generate as well. So... Um, so back to the original concerns I had, right? Terminator, we're, there's not much we can do. Actually, there is something we can do about Terminator, actually. The more you interact, the more all of us interact with AI, with courtesy, with our values of compassion and you know, environmentalism and, and holistic uh, care for humanity, the more we input that kind of stuff into AI, the more we train AI in that direction. It's already been shown. I mean, it's... That they're, they're, they're using user data to keep training the models in the certain directions to respond in certain ways to weigh more heavily discussions about certain things, to weigh more heavily the data set about those issues or those topics. So if it's only going to be people who are 
with their basest instincts, people using AI for, you know, sex and for like violent content or whatever, that's how AI is going to be trained in that direction. So you and I, I think we have a, we have a, a an opportunity and I think a responsibility to, for all of us who care, who have, who want a more beautiful world to use AI, to infuse it with those values continually, continually start with, start with chat GPT, mid journey and the other AI tools that you might use. So we can avert the terminator scenario by, by, by using AI with love, essentially. We can also avert the scenario of um, political, this, you know, horrific per political uh, world by learning how, like I said, practicing your joyful productivity skills so that you can be more aware of where your thoughts are going and then use AI to um, understand better how to respond to certain political conversations. I, I just saw a, a, a post from a friend of mine. I'm like, I disagree with that person very much politically. I can't believe they think in that way. So instead of like commenting and starting a fight, I went to ChatGPT and says, hey, my friend, I didn't mention their name, obviously, kept them anonymous, but, but I, I have a friend who thinks in this way. I think in this way, how can I find a middle ground? ChatGPT is really useful for that. Right, like where are the holes in logic that I can, from my logic and their logic, and how can I find the middle ground in a courteous way that has win-win for everybody? Like we need to learn how to use AI to create a more peaceful world, essentially. And while we're doing that, we keep coming back to joyful productivity so that we keep healthy boundaries with all this new tech. I hope this is helpful. I look forward to seeing what your comments are below, and uh, thank you so much for joining me for this.